Call this meeting to order of the uh, general general appropriations subcommittee of the House Appropriations Committee, and we're having hearings this afternoon uh, from various agencies on the uh, governor's recommendation for the 2008 general budget. And first on the uh, first on the agenda is the Department of Audits, and uh, I know that Russell Hinton could not be here this afternoon, and. Uh, we appreciate y'all coming to make the presentation. Uh, if you're looking at our tracking document, we're on page 7 to 25. And in addition, I've provided a one-page handout that provides uh, more detail than what's in the tracking document. And if it suits you, I'd like to work from my one-page handout. Thank you. Uh, the first category that I'd like to talk about in our budget is the statewide budget changes not funded in the FY 2007 budget. We had this discussion as well in those seven supplemental. In that, the Georgia Department of Audits submits this budget to OPB and the governor on September 1st. At that time, we would be unaware of increases to health insurance premiums, for example, real estate rentals, for example, and any workers' comp or employment comp or what have you. And it's just the way the process currently works. So in looking at my one-page document, the, the first category of statewide budget changes not funded in FY 2007, that is the increases to health insurance, our GBA real estate rentals, and workers' compensation not included in last year's 07 budget. So we've added that in at this point in time. In addition to that, if you go to the next category, the statewide budget changes, we've annualized our raises just have, as, as other agencies as well as a 3% pay raises and promotions for our employees. We did anticipate the 3%, and and 3% is what it turned out to be in the budget. I guess I should have been in Vegas. But the next item is uh, on, on the list are our departmental budget changes that uh, we have added for fiscal year 2008. And I'd like to highlight some of those. The first is a request for five additional positions in our performance audit division. And to give you a little history of that, uh, back in 95 or so, the Brock Committee was was established as the Budgetary Responsibility Oversight Committee. However, it was dissolved in 06. Upon the dissolving of this committee, we did lose uh, five positions. And as our state auditor has pointed out, while the commission went away, the work didn't. So that is a request for five additional positions in our performance audit division. Uh, last year, computer, laptop computers for auditors were funded. We did reduce our budget for that this year, so that comes back out. Uh, additionally, we have some increases in our budget for infrastructure needs for our IT applications and what have you, and, and I've, I've listed that out in my one-page document. For the net change of that is a reduction in the budget of about $225,000. So those items that you're looking at that I just alluded to agrees with the tracking sheet, and it shows our increase for our 2008 budget submission. 
now. Get back to the issue of us submitting our budget by September 1st. There's no way that we would have anticipated uh, an increase in health insurance from 16.713% uh, to 22.84%. So in the last section of my handout, I had included those in this budget, which at this point in time is unfunded. And that would be our submission of our budget for 2008 for the Georgia Department of Audits. Thank you for the presentation. We have any questions? As you can see, there is an additional request here. Are we always going to have to play catch up? All those uh, items up in the top there on the uh, 2007 fiscal year on uh, health insurance, uh, rent, and workers' comp, is that always going to have to be a kick in any way to coordinate it to anticipate those needs and build it into the current budget? So you don't have to, I assume in 80, 08, you're going to have to come back and do the same thing at the end of 08? Yes, sir. Uh, so if you will, put, like, put yourself in my shoes. Basically what we do, we, we try to anticipate an increase in, in salaries. These other items, I could maybe attempt to increase that, but I'm between a rock and a hard place, if you will, in that if we request money like that and it's not money used, the money goes into the governor's budget document. Maybe that's money that could have been used for another uh, priority is the, is the best way I can answer that. Uh, I could uh, estimate what I think is going to happen and put numbers in the budget or uh, I don't know how to say this without just pointing out if there's something you guys could do to get the OPB to put the money in the budget for us whenever they put it in just like for other agencies. Well, that's uh, what I'm, that I'm, would be, my suggestion would be to put the uh, responsibility back with the health plan <laughs> and uh, with GBA. I mean, they know, uh, should know, what the rent's going to be for fiscal year 08, but you're going to have to go over this again midterm next year to fill in these same gaps. It just doesn't make sense, but that's something I guess we can. Yes, sir, and, and oftentimes uh, some of these decisions probably aren't made until December is, is what I'm yeah. guessing, too. Yeah. And uh, so it would be, I want to say, OPB. I understand. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Help me to understand. You said a bright commission was formed. It was phased out, but yet you need the positions. Could you kind of help me to understand that? Yes, sir. We have a performance audit division, and I'm lucky enough to have our director of performance audits here today. Uh, the, the, we still maintain a performance audit division in that we still receive numerous requests from the House Budget Office, the Senate Budget Office, the Governor's Office for performance-type audit work, and we still perform those, those engagements. Uh, and uh, because Brock went away, we, we still perform the duties at the request of the legis legislature. Yes, it does. Representative Chairman O'Neill, I'm on. Uh, like I said last time, we have so many chairmen on the committee. I'm going to Just start everybody. AU is fine with me, Mr. Chairman. That's uh, quick question. I remember it was either last year or the year before, I think it was the year before, we created the Office of the State Accountant. And I was led to believe in that process that that was going to take uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the functions that theretofore had been performed by audits over into another agency. Uh, and yet, I see your budget is higher now than it was even two years ago, with a lot, presumably, of less duties. Did that not happen? I mean, are, are you all doing more now than you were before? Before we had the office of the accountant, or yes, sir. Uh, in that budget, we, we did produce, we did give up seven positions and transferred our seven positions, which basically is it was a reporting unit that was compiling the state's financials at the time. From my understanding, we, we did transfer those positions to the state accounting office. It is the contention of our division directors and our auditors that we are able to audit more. We all are, uh, expand the work that we're doing. We're able to gain more assurance in our audits of the financial statements of Georgia, but 
as far as the efficiencies gain from the city county office right now, it remains at those seven positions that we gave up. Could you can I follow up on that, Mr. Chairman? Is, uh, what's uh, the approximate value of those seven positions from a budget standpoint? See, we we didn't give up entry level positions. And if I recall, we even gave up a little bit of travel money, supply material money. I don't recall, do you, Carol, Matt, how much? If I, if I recall, we, we reduced the budget by some $400,000 back in 06. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, legislation has placed us for budget purposes as a legislative agency. And I believe Russell has spoken on this before, and he feels like the majority of our work is on the executive branch. So there's a separation of duties. There's an independence degree there by the legislation that at that time placed us for budget purposes as a legislative agency. So as a result, we're just as a general assembly, the courts, and audits ends up in a position that because OPB and the governor is the executive branch, they build that part of the budget and the law specifically states that we submit our budget and that the governor basically cannot change it. That is correct. Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wonder if you could just uh, expound a little bit on the uh, the reduction in the cost of laptop computers that were in the FY 2007 uh, budget, about $700,000. That's, uh, could you just tell me a little bit about that? Yes, sir. Uh, it was graciously funded by the, the House and the Senate that we replace all laptop computers for all our auditors in one year. We, we didn't do it gradually over three years. As part of a replacement cycle, it was funded last year, and we promptly turned around and reduced that out of our budget in the following year. And we will not replace computers again for four to five years. Any, I don't see any lights. Any other questions? Representative oh, yeah. Hill. That brings the light. And thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Sir, when was it known that this reduction would occur approximately? The $700,000 reduction for the laptops for the 07 budget? Uh, we wouldn't know that. This, I mean, from last year's budget, we would have automatically gone in and reduced that because it's basically a one-time purchase until we replenish our, or replace our computers again in four to five years. So, I mean, we reduced that from the budget prior to submitting this to the governors, to the governor and OPB. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand, was that money that was actually not utilized? No, sir, we actually... In, in 07, did you have the money in 07 and just not going to be using it or in 08? I'm, I'm a little confused on that. No, sir, we asked for the money last year. We increased our budget for the money last year. And uh, as I said, you graciously funded it, which we appreciate. But you increased our budget for the purchase of the laptops, and we're promptly reducing our budget this year for the like purchase. Okay, so that money that you had in for the laptops in 07 was spent in 07 for yes, laptops. Yes, okay, thank you very much. That, that clarified it for me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, thank you. So all the lights I see. I do have a couple questions, and, and it seems like every time I get an answer, I, I, it creates more questions for me and probably other members of the committee, too. Um, I mean, it would seem from what you're saying that your agency submits the uh, your request or your budget, really, to OPB 
but it's really more for it just to be included in the governor's document. It's not for him to uh, – your independence is such that it's the General Assembly that, that should be creating your budget. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Well, then that raises a question to me. In the, in the tracking sheet, there are recommendations and, – and this may be confusing to me because everything is really a governor's recommendation that we get in this document. It's really just a recommendation. The, gov the governor can't really – he can't really change anything. He can make recommendations to it. But in the uh, tracking sheet, just as any other agency, there are recommendations from the governor. There are some, uh, some additions here, including the uh, five positions. So explain to me, if you would, how does that work? I, I'm missing something here. Yes, sir. Going into the budget preparation, we, we asked for the five positions from the start. So by us placing the five positions in the budget, it stays in there until it gets to the House and the Senate. So that, that would be for the five positions okay. because we place it in the budget. Now, as okay. far as these other increases, because they were funded in the 07 budget, I am now asking for them in the 08 budget because at this point I know about it and it's not in there. So looking at our top number, the $31 million for our 07 budget, we're operating right now without last year's 2% increase in health insurance, last year's GBA real estate rentals that was already afforded the other agencies right. in the executive branch. So we, at that point, are asking for last year's money, in essence, by putting it in the document that we submit to the governor, and then the governor puts it in. And that's what you're looking at here. Okay. I think I understand then. I mean, the, the governor's recommendation just shows what you all had you all had asked for, you, you, you had uh, made the request for. That's what it really does. It just, it just flows through. Yes, sir. Okay. I understand that then. And then, too, um, since we do want to have that independence, and I understand the need for it, and I appreciate, you know, appreciate having that, but since you, there's the independence for the General Assembly, um, then any additional money that were put in, that would be put in, and I'm, I'm saying this respectfully, I'm, I'm trying to think this through, but in reality, it should be split between the, the House and the Senate. In other words, if you were asking for $500,000 for something, uh, it would be right then for the House, if, if we decided to do it, to put in half of that, then the Senate probably ought to put in the other half. I mean, isn't that correct? I would hope it would work that way, yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> I've got the task of coming up with the money. And, uh, I understand. And, and the Senate and the House split there. Uh, but I am speaking as far as the independence that you had that you had uh, spoke of. And, and here again, I'm not trying yes, to put you on the spot or anything. But well, also from an independence point, keep in mind, we, we don't audit the General Assembly, the books of the General Assembly. And so that way, that maintains our <coughs> complete independence from the standpoint from an audit right. perspective. Right. So... Well, let me ask you this. On this, uh, and I was, I've become familiar with this million and a half just a couple of days ago, uh, but on this million and a half, if it did not go into this, uh, if, if this, none of this money, additional money went into the 08 general budget in this process we're going through and uh, we will uh, approve by the end of the session, the governor signs into law and everything, what would that, what would that do to your department? What, that, what would that really mean? Well, I would uh, appreciate some form of assurance as to whether I think it would be subsequently funded. If not, that one amount is more than a semi-monthly payroll for the Department of Audits. And I think, as the State Auditor said, we're people at computers, and the payroll is a significant part of our budget. So I'm at the mercy now of asking for the money for last year because we've operated as if we're going to receive the money, mm -hmm. uh, the, the funding. Uh, if it came down to it and we were to lose the quill of, a, of an entire assembly monthly payroll and we don't know about it until sometime in the legislative process February March we would have to lay, lay people off. Okay, and that's what we're trying to find. That's what I'm trying to find out. I think all of us, we just want to know what the what the reality of it would be and what all this really means, you know, in, uh, in uh, the operation of your of the agency. We have another question. Got it. Following up a little bit of what we're talking about as far as the uh, workup of your budget, 
realistically, when you, in other words, you, you say that when you present your budget to the governor, the governor looks at it and pretty well rubber stamps, you can't change it. Who, is there any other, do you go to legislative budget office to uh, talk to them about any increases you might need? I mean, how does this come about and all of a sudden we're sitting here looking at it? Has anybody else had any input as far as establishing your budget? Yes, sir. I have budget analysts assigned to me from both SBO and HBO. Okay. And uh, they are submitted with our doc budget documentation and it is provided to my budget analyst. Yes, sir. Okay. So this doesn't get them by, I mean, it, they, they have knowledge that's in, in the request. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Actually, two questions to, to clarify it. Maybe I'm really slow today, but I, and if, excuse me, I do not have my 07 amended paperwork with me, the amended budget, so I'm having to shoot from memory here. But you mentioned several times it would be making up for last year, or in other words, the 07 budget. But I thought I remembered in the 07 amended budget, you asked, the, the department asked for that money, so we'd make up for it in the supplemental budget. Did I miss something, or was that for the 06 budget? No, no, sir. I'm trying to. I thought I thought we made up that, that, that a few, few weeks ago. You are correct, and, and, and here's why. If we had the money currently in the 07 budget, if you'd look at my top line, the fiscal year 2007 budget, it would have been increased by that 678, which is a supplemental budget, and that's what will increase that that number. Let's say that the supplemental budget had already been passed at this point. My 2007 budget would be the 31 million plus the 678 thousand, and we wouldn't be discussing that first category today because you would have funded it in 06, and it would be already in. I mean, you would have funded it in 07, and it would already be in there, and I wouldn't be asking for it for 08. It makes it look like I'm looking for looking for it twice or asking for it mm -hmm. twice. I'm not. Okay. It's not in the 07 at this point. So because I started with the number that doesn't have it in there to begin with, I have to ask for it to fund monitors in 0. Seven and now I'm having to put it back in in 08 as well. Follow me. Right. So if we not really, but I I think so. So, I'd, Mr. Chairman, then then if we when you do the final work on the 08, you'll have to look and make sure what we've done on the 07 because it it can only be one place or the other. And if we do fund it for 07, then we well, can remove it from the 08. Right. Is but our correct? 2007 budget will be 31 million plus the 678, and then you won't see it twice. But and, and you won't see it anymore. That's correct. Okay, I think. Okay. And, and and going forward, did, we did get uh, commitments out of at least the Georgia Bil Building Authority, and I I think from uh, the, the folks handling the the payroll and the and the health insurance that they would be more than happy to provide uh, audits department with the same information early in the fall about proposed increases because the audit department is the only department that did not that did not have those proposed increases in their budgets and that's because GBA had provided it to everybody else and when we talked to them when they presented their budget we requested that they make that information available to your department so for 09 you all would be able to get that information well in advance like the other departments do which might help us from looking forward to this, and I think you can also will be able to obtain that for your health insurance and premiums and uh, workers' comp, et cetera, in the future. Yes, sir. We, we, we requested that they do that to assist us all in understanding this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? I, I want to comment on I think, uh, I, I may be wrong about this, but I think the problem with that is that until those increases, they may propose increases from GBA or any of these agencies, but until that goes through that process, I mean, they can propose them, but that doesn't mean that the governor is going to agree with it and be, be an actual uh, part of his budget. So if they, I think the problem would be they could, they could let them know about that. They could let the Department of Audits know what they plan to do, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's what would be done. That's not necessarily would be the increase that would eventually come out of uh, the governor's office or through OPB to the governor's office and then from his office. I think that's the pro I think that's the problem with, with that. But I mean, I understand what you're saying. I think we've I think we've learned a lot about the about that. Now let me ask you this too, uh, just so I can understand the reality of things. If we uh, 
But if you only got, we still know that we're talking about the 08 budget, so we would still have the 08 amended budget to take up next year, halfway through the fiscal year. If your agency only got half of this, what you're requesting now, what would that do to your agency as far as operations? If instead of this, and then we look to put in the rest of it in the 08 amended budget next year, what would that do? I would like to know the plan accordingly for staffing requirements, and it would determine how much work our division directors can give up or move to another year. It, it, it would depend on a lot of things. Uh, if it were half and there were the chance that I wasn't going to get the other half, the sooner I know, the better, and we can staff accordingly, leaving positions vacant, delaying audits, changing maybe a less assurance on certain engagements. Uh, I guess what I'm telling you is we could adjust given the proper notification, but the result is people and audit work is what it amounts to. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, we're going to do everything we can to, to uh, do what we need to do. It's just that in this process, you know, until we find, I mean, which you're very familiar with, but until we find money to help your agency someplace else, we don't have any money to plug in there. So it's just that whole process. We, If we add this, we've got to find money someplace else to put in there for it. So, and you know that very well. But we want to help, and we want your, you all do a great job, and I uh, want to make sure that you have the, the resources to continue. Yes. I think Representative Black has a question. I'm going to ask a question and pro, uh, both try to get some input from you, plus also maybe provoke some thought on the part of my uh, committee members here. But uh, as this seems, I think some of the people are having trouble understanding the, the uh, maintaining the independence of the governor's office uh, poses for you. Uh, but it would certainly be possible for you all to sit down and uh, anticipate a lot of this and maybe over. Uh, estimate the cost of it to be sure that you had yourself covered, uh, and uh, I, I was would like for you to comment on, on whether or not that would cause any problems. And then also ask these fellows sitting up here to think about uh, was it, if they'd like to see a budget come in here where that you had uh, probably overestimated some of these costs. And honestly. The reason I have it, well, I would have never anticipated it was an increase health insurance this year. I mean, I could have put something in there, but I would have never anticipated uh, the rate going from uh, 16 to 22 percent. But you're right, I wouldn't be asking for as, as much, that's for sure. Quite honestly, as, as the preparer of the budget, it, it is really, I've really felt like that it is the governor, it is the legislative body that determines the budget, and that if, if I take money and almost create a placeholder there that maybe there were better needs for the money somewhere else in the event that that money is available. Now it is locked in the budget. And sure, I guess you could redirect it at, at some later time through this process, and, and we would offer the money up. And uh, I would be certainly open to estimate that with some input from my budget analyst as to what they think is going to happen as well. And, 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 and you're right, I, I could do that. I, I, I it would, it would make it easier on us legislators if you, if you requested a, an excess and it come to us with, uh, with a figure that was greater than what the actual cost of uh, the uh, insurance and, and uh, the uh, rentals were going to be, then that would be the money that we could turn around and divert to other uses. But uh, which, which I could do that because, like I said, I, I currently do that for pay increases. Like I said, I hit the 3% this year. There is a year that I overestimated, and we did give the money up. And you, through the process, used the money somewhere else in the budget. I, I could do that. Uh, I will get with Mr. Charlie Walker and uh, Mr. Kevin Fillion and my budget analyst, and uh, we'll, we'll talk that through. If that's I think that think might we be need something we need to go. some people would feel, maybe feel a little more comfortable with. But I wanted to see what y'all was thinking of what it would be. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Much. I appreciate you. You've done a great job uh, filling in for Mr. Hinton, and we appreciate uh, appreciate you being here. Next on the agenda is the uh, State Accounting Office, Mr. Valenga. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, and members of the committee. Appreciate your time this afternoon. To in our budget. 
quickly go through some of the handout that I'm uh, giving out. Um, one of the things I just want to remind you of, and I'm sure that you know better than I, that the state of Georgia is big business. You know, we we run about $34 billion worth of revenue through the state's uh, coffers every year, $21 billion in capital assets, about $6 billion in bonded debt, about $17 billion in general taxes and revenues and fees, and about $10 billion in federal funds. We have about 88 departments and agencies, 37 colleges and universities, 61 component units, providing, of course, all the government services that there are. The reason I bring that up is that the state accounting office is the um, kind of the back office for all those operations and provides <clears throat> services that are necessary uh, to run uh, state government, keep track of the money that we spend. Mr. Flanga? Yes. Maybe you get, I don't know if you can get any closer to the mic or maybe I'm pull sorry. back a little bit. I think, I don't, I'm not sure that the uh, sound is, is going through the uh, system. Okay. Is this any better? Is that better? Uh, remind you, because we're new, I'm, I'm covering ground that we may have covered before, but I just want to make sure that uh, we understand the roles that we have. We we do the financial report. You should have recently, this week, got the comprehensive annual financial report that we published this uh, for fiscal year 2006. <clears throat> we, of course, run the accounting systems, the, uh, the PeopleSoft HR system. We're responsible for policies and procedures for the whole state cash management improvement, accounts receivable improvement, asset management improvement, and various other things. We, we completed the reports. We uh, upgraded the system to major upgrades this last a couple of years, and that lays the foundation for the future that we're going to talk about. Uh, we've implemented self-service. we are modified the system to do a better job of monitoring program budgeting that we've moved into. On page six, I'm just trying to give you a hi highlight of you know, the volume of uh, work that goes through the systems. Uh, annually, we pay <clears throat> over 500,000 checks, over 100,000 uh, electronic payments. This is to vendors and providers of services. We, we write over 420,000 payroll checks and over a million direct deposits every year. We have over 43,000, or excuse me, over 43,000 help desk calls coming through our supporting these functions from all of our users. You notice there's <clears throat> over 5,000 users on the financial system. So we have a lot of work. And when we were created, we were created to perform those basic functions. But things have changed a little bit, and, th and there's been growth in what we're doing. The state's going through what we call a, a back office transformation. A lot of the things that the Commission for New Georgia has recommended are to improve the ability for the state to do its job, to bring us kind of into the 21st century of, of the way we do business. And I put a quote in here from a study done by uh, a group of, uh, it's called the Electronic Commerce Commission, that, that talked about back office and the benefits of it are usually a great value to uh, providing p uh, government services, but you don't see it on the public end. You see it back in the service provided to the agencies but it usually provides better service and cheaper service. And one of the most common mistakes is when we enter into that kind of half-heartedly and ducking the challenge and don't follow through on commitments. We've been working very closely with the Department of Administrative Services and with the uh, Georgia Merit System, the Office of Planning and Budget, the Georgia Technology Authority, and we have, and I mentioned this in uh, my last presentation, we have worked together to look at the best way to do business and to meet the needs of the initiatives that came out for those uh, departments, they've decided that PeopleSoft was the module to use to provide their services. And we are the PeopleSoft provider. We all agreed as a group that it's better to have the economies of scale of running that in one shop as opposed to running that in many shops and having multiple instances of PeopleSoft. But in doing that, we're going to be adding six modules to PeopleSoft for procurement we're going to be adding seven modules for human resource uh, area, in the human resource area. There's a new asset management system being implemented, <clears throat> and that uh, is going to be, the governor has recommended that be transferred to the state accounting office, and there's interfaces that will go between that and the PeopleSoft system. 
Uh, we're working on improvement cash management. There's a module for that, accounts receivable module, and for statewide reporting, which was one of the initiatives of the state accounting office, <coughs> four modules. Sir. And we've also been integrating our systems with the Office of Planning Budgets, budget net system in preparation, so we can keep those systems in sync and do a better job of monitoring in the budget process as people use their budgets during the year. What that's amounted to is, of course, a significant increase in our workload. Um, I can, as you can see, we've gone from supporting 12 modules to 31, or will be. <clears throat> in addition to that, we have just the normal business process that we would normally have to do. The federal government has required some Homeland Security uh, disbursement matching that we still have to accomplish, haven't done yet. We've got interfaces with retirement systems. This just to give you a kind of a sampling of the workload challenges that we're facing. Uh, we need to upgrade the legislative member service system. That's what is used to pay you. I'm sure you want that to be working well. Um, the asset management program, as we talked about in policies and accounting manuals, and improving our customer service and training. I included a slide on page 11 that we, I showed you before to show the, system, the agencies that are currently on PeopleSoft and the need to bring more people so that we can have a better uh, management of the state's data on an enterprise basis. And so our budget request, <clears throat> the majority of our budget request is, is um, if we were to look at our total budget request, we've asked for moving money uh, to fund positions to take care of that workload. Um, and I've shown you where those positions were identified in financial reporting systems. There's a, the technical and help desk and business analysts that run all of those systems. Also, uh, financial reporting, we've done a good job in getting those out, but it's been very tight trying to get those completed by the end of the fiscal year. And those people also help in the policy development and the analysis. Um, the statewide accounting function is to the consultants we had come in and identify the business needs for improving the cash management and disbursement functions recommended about six more positions than we're requesting. We didn't request all that they recommended. We thought that was way too high. Um, and then when you, you that kind of growth also needs administrative support. And so to accomplish that, we've asked that some of the one-time money that was in our budget last year in fiscal 06 be redirected to fund those positions. The uh, governor's office also recommended and the Department of Administrative Services is in, is in agreement that we would move the asset management system to the state accounting office. <clears throat> That's already funded. It's not new money. It's just transferring money from the Department of Administrative Services to the state accounting office. And it actually results in a net reduction if you were to look at the total amount of budget that we requested versus 2006 of 1.7 because we had one-time funds for system developments and we, we're not asking to keep that. We're just asking to reduce it by less so that we, so it's, the only increase in our budget is, again, transfer of funds that were already in another budget, and those will be reduced in the other budget. And then for the um, salaries, health insurance, and floor space increases that are recommended in the governor's budget. So um, we, we just went through a major upgrade, and our, uh, <coughs> our staff are folk. That all by itself requires a significant effort and work level increase. and. For us to continue to provide the services that we were you know, directed to provide, and as, this, as the increased demands on our office, and as we develop what the office of the state accounting office really should look like, because it is new and it has been, is being developed in that definition, that's why we're asking uh, for that position count. Any questions? Yes. Five positions on administration, is that uh, just related to uh, half budgeting for the year uh, or one salary? Or? No, we, we thought we would need, um, we don't have anybody to help us with contracts and legal, any kind of legal advice on a daily basis, but we didn't think we'd need a full part-time person. We thought we would try and get a, a half-time person for that kind of work, so somebody who was interested in working part-time or sharing the services with another department if that's what it took. 
Um, we, we, our, our administrative staff right now is very limited. We have uh, one person for HR, and she just there's more than she can do to keep up with you know what we're trying to do. Uh, we have one receptionist and one administrative assistant for all of our staff, and and <laughs> we need some help. <laughs> Especially if we, you know, with this growth that's going on. But again, we're not asking, it's not an increase in the amount of budget, but it is an increase in the number of positions. I wanted to ask, if you no know, time turning on, I wanted to ask you about um, just a couple of questions. PeopleSoft is the is the software, is that the name of a software company? The company is Oracle. Oracle bought PeopleSoft a few years ago, but PeopleSoft was a software was the initial company. They've left the, that product intact and continue to support that product, but it is a, one of the major uh, enterprise software providers in the country. There are several states that have actually just selected that as the implementation. Okay. I want to ask now, it would seem, and I'm, maybe I'm, I'm probably mistaken, but just you know, from the presentation and what, what I see, it, it probably isn't as big or entwined as it looks, but it almost looks like PeopleSoft is so entwined in in the uh, in the operations of your office and, and procurement and so many of these things that we do that if that they pretty well have us, uh, you know, they could they could do about anything they wanted to with us if they uh, upgrade, they could charge what they wanted to for and uh, for it. And I mean, am I am I off track here, or is there any? T just tell tell me about that if well, you would comment on it. Those are the challenges that any any business deals with when selecting a, um, they're, they're called enterprise resource planning systems, which means they're, they provide enterprise capabilities to manage your functions of across all of those boundaries that you see there and others. And they do, it is a major investment. So when you make that kind of investment, you do kind of get tied into continuing to provide or to continuing to look to that provider for service. They're in the competitive world just like anyone else. So if they don't keep their prices competitive, then they they have to, you know, deal with that. But but you don't really have an option, a very much a good option of every year going out and looking at another provider of services. That's what because it sounds like. The investment you make in implementing these things are in the millions, tens, tens of millions of dollars and sometimes some some organizations that's in the hundreds of millions of dollars, but so it's it's too major of an investment for it to keep switching around. So okay, I mean have, I just hear I you hear have to live with what you buy. Yeah, I mean I hear and I it's see this people solve so much that it it just kind of worries me. I mean, it, it, it's a long term decision when you make those decisions. Okay, all right. Well, I appreciate that. Any other questions? Thank you very much for coming today. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is employment retirement system. Do we have somebody here? Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Mike Neff. I'm the Director of Employees Retirement System Georgia. By statute, ERS administers nine separate systems and programs for the state, uh, including the uh, Employees Retirement, the Public School Employee System, uh, Legislator System, Judges Systems. Uh, we also administer the uh, plan for part-time employees in the state, the um, defined contribution plan. Uh, we administer the life insurance plan, which is the uh, State Employees Assurance Department program, uh, the Georgia Military Pension Fund, and Peach State Reserves, which is the deferred count program for state employees. Um, the mission of ERS is to be the guardian of the uh, retirement systems it administers for the benefit of the members and beneficiaries. Uh, core responsibilities of ERS are to perform all pension administration, uh, collect, reconcile uh, the employee and employer contributions to the system, to make disper uh, disbursements of pensions and refunds to uh, retirees and employees, and in essence invest uh, the, the assets for and on behalf of the members and their beneficiaries. 
In general, ERS is a vehicle to collect contributions, to manage the investments, and then pay out benefits. Um, the 2008 uh, budget uh, really shows a, a overall a reduction uh, of, of needs, uh, primarily because of um, in the public school employees retirement system. However, you'll see uh, we have had increases in system administration uh, for the uh, annualization of salary costs, uh, increase in the workers' comp uh, insurance, and an adjustment in the state health benefit plan premiums. Um, the deferred compensation program, you'll see a, a large reduction there um, for a, an outsourcing uh, to uh, a company called City Street um, for the administration of the deferred compensation program. Uh, you'll see an increase then in the Georgia Military Pension Fund, which every year uh, the actuary performs his study on the system and recommends the employer contribution to maintain that system, its viability over the, uh, for the future. And then a, uh, what seems to look like a large reduction in the public school employee system, and I'd be happy to answer questions about that or show you what the component parts uh, that make up uh, that contribution every year. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I'm not sure it is. I've got one. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Would you please help explain to us or help us to, we'll be able to explain to our constituents exactly what we're doing in reducing fund, funding to the public school employees retirement system. I think I understand it, but I want to make sure. So I'd like to hear it in, in your words. Yes, sir. That's, a, that's an excellent question. The, um, every year the actuary makes a recommendation uh, to the pension board about what is required to maintain the system's viability. Um, the state has properly funded uh, public school fund for every year and sometimes funded more than was necessary but has a history of making the proper appropriate contributions to the system. Um, the state also provides funds to help offset the administrative costs to run that system. That's another component part. Uh, and then the last couple years, there's been an increase approved by the legislature to increase the benefits to these public school employees. <laughs> and recall, these are non-teacher employees of the state. They're the bus drivers, cafeteria worker type folks that, uh, whose pensions are very small. And the reason they're small is because the plan was never meant to be a complete, full, sole pension program for them. Uh, they receive Social Security benefits, and when the program began, it was, for the most part, um, for employees that were working part-time. The bus drivers would work in the morning, the route, the afternoon route, cafeteria workers would work the middle of the day, and so forth. So the program uh, provides for relatively modest benefits. Uh, the legislature in the, the past several years has voted to increase those benefits um, by what are called um, it's a fraction of a dollar. For example, if 50 cents was approved, there would be a 50% increase to retirees' benefits for every year that they worked. So if they had, say they had put in 10 years of service, uh, there would be an extra $5 per month provided for their benefit. So what you find in the 2007 year budget, I'm going to get to the point here. apologize for getting a little time. What you see in the 2007 year budget was a total uh, cost of seven million oh seventy one nine ninety six, which is comprised of that first year cost for that increase in the multiplier of uh, two million eight fifty, and what you see in the fiscal oh eight budget um, is a zero number for that because there's been no increase in this year for that purpose. Now there may be an increase that's provided sometime um, in this next year, perhaps if there's money in the budget. And, and so forth for next year. But at this point in time, the only money required for the public school budget is what the actuary has said is needed to properly fund the program on a fiscally responsible basis and the offset of administrative costs uh, to run the program. Okay, so this fund will meet all the new federal requirements, making sure that we're, we're fully 
funded well into the future yes, as sir. it is. So yes, we're we're there with this one. Maybe not some of our other retirement programs, but this one is theirs. Is that what correct. I'm hearing? Okay, because you know what the newspaper is going to do with this. It looks exactly like we're cutting, uh, you know, the the retirement fund, and I want to make sure that we're all very clear on that that we're not. So thank you very much. You're welcome. And Representative Black, have a question. A couple of uh, points uh, back on this school uh, employees retirement fund. Uh, you made a statement that these people were covered by Social Security. Are you aware that a large number of school systems of the state of Georgia opted out of the Social Security program during a period when it was legal for them to do so? Yes, sir. And, and there are many of these employees, and, and I believe it's a majority, that do not have Social Security benefits. We may want to check on those numbers because it is a requirement by law for them to participate in Social Security. It, it is not legal for the school system to uh, pay Social Security on these people if they have opted out. It's, it's, uh, it's system-wide or, or, or no. One of the other, you're correct in that, and one, one of the other administrative programs that ERS runs is the Social Security program for the state. So it's, it's probably every week that we have a request for systems to opt in, and they have those opportunities to opt in at any point through referendums that take place in the schools. And the while the teachers may not be required to participate in Social Security, the non-teacher public school employees are. And so what you find, Representative, is that most of the public school system's non-teacher employees are in fact paying into Social Security, while the teachers are not, because their retirement system meets the requirements that don't require them to participate in Social Security. It's been some time since I was on the school board and dealt with this issue, but at that time, a school system could not have the certified people on off of Social Security and exempt from it, and the non-certified people paying into Social Security. Now, has that changed? I'm not sure that it's changed, but but perhaps what you, what's happened is that more and more systems have added Social Security for uh, this group of people. Um, there, there there have also been, been, there's also been... Um, increased audits by Internal Revenue Service, uh, making sure that appropriate people are paying into Social Security, and that may also have resulted in more and more systems having these referendums and people paying into Social Security. And you made a statement that most of these were <clears throat> people working part-time? Originally, uh, a majority of the employees were part-time, yes, sir. Uh, this covers the maintenance personnel and uh, the custodial staff, uh, uh, that are all full-time people, secretarial staff, all of these are full-time people. And uh, it's be pretty, I was, in, I was close, uh, I think, between even if you classify lunchroom workers and bus drivers as part-time, you're still, uh, I'm not sure you'd even have a majority of them part-time because the maintenance and the custodial staff uh, and, and, and the clerical staff in school just might be bigger than the lunchroom staff and the bus drivers. Well, that is probably very true. Another statistic that would be helpful for you to know is that of the 37,000 members of this retirement system, the active members, that more than 75% are people who have less than 10 years of service, and the average age is over 50 years old. So what we've seen is that people will perhaps retire from one line of work or another and then work in some part-time capacity for the school systems. And once they become vested in a pension, which is 10 years of service, they're also eligible for health insurance benefits. And so we find that many people will get vested for the 10 years and then retire and have benefits going forward. You're exactly right. We have many, many people that will come to work for the school system just to draw the insurance, and then once they get vested in it, and, and, and this will be the wives of uh, uh, self-employed people, uh, yes. and there's a lot of other factors involved in this. Correct. Uh, but uh, this program is is quite inadequate uh, if a person doesn't have Social Security, and 
we are approaching the point in time where that window for people to opt out of Social Security uh, is, is fixing to come into play that we're going to have people retiring from the school systems of Georgia that all they're going to have drawn is this uh, public school employees benefit, and that's going to be scandalous. curious as to um, your investment philosophy. I know you said that's one third of what it is your agency does. And so as um, the, nationally, there's more of an e effort of looking at different ways of investment strategies. What is your basic philosophy for, for us? And is it, are you planning on changing it? Thank you. That's a great question. The, um, the employee's retirement system is is very similar to the teacher's retirement system. We have a lot of similar um, functions. And one of the same functions is the investments. So there's a division of investment services that serves the needs of both ERS and teacher's retirement. Uh, combined, the total assets under management are approximately $65 billion. $65 billion. So it's a large system. I'm not sure how it ranks across the, the country, but it's it's among the largest uh, retirement systems when you combine the two uh, in the United States. Um, that being said, um, you invest pension assets for the long term. Um, and pension payments um, generally are such that it's only a very small amount of, of all your payouts and, and compared to how much money you have on your investments. So a pension fund can withstand some ups and downs from time to time. But generally speaking, um, what ERS expects is overall to earn 7.5% return on its investments. Uh, now, 7.5% multiplied by roughly $65 billion a year brings in between 4 and $5 billion a year in investment income, which, interestingly to note, more than covers the pension payouts every year. So by itself, the investment income today is more than is, is paying for more than the pension payments so that the funds continue to grow. Um, we receive approximately of all the income that's received of the pension funds, less than 20% comes from contributions and more than 80% comes from investment returns. Um, as far as philosophy, it's a very balanced strategy. Um, no more than 60% of the money can be invested in stocks, which includes domestic stocks and international stocks. And even of that, not more than 10% can be invested in international stocks. Uh, the other 40% can be invested in bonds. Uh, it's, uh, uh, the system has, has done very well over time. Over the last, I believe, 10 years, the average return has been over 8%, which exceeds that actuarial required rate of return. Um, I'll be happy to answer any, any other questions. I, I'm just, sir. Is there, all right, quickly, is there any um, consideration now being done to increase your risk factor with your excess balance? If, you if, in other areas? yes, ma'am, I think I understand where you, where you might be going there. The, uh, there is an interest to increase the amount of money that's invested in international stocks. So you'll, there may be a bill that you see that relates to a change there again, to provide a additional opportunity to earn more money, as well as private equity. Uh, there will be a private equity bill, I believe. Again, private equity and international are tools that the investment community uses to help increase the rate of return on investments. Final question, then, on that. Is this, um, are we leaders in this consideration, or are we following a trend with other states? I believe Georgia may be one of only three states in the country that does not have any exposure at all to private equity. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Curious, I got a couple of pieces of correspondence in the mail that I don't know where we went to legislators we went to regarding the Peach State Reserve. Yes, one sir. is a 401k plan and one was, I think, a retirement. Is that something that affects us? Should I go back and look at it very closely, or is it just an informational piece of correspondence? 
the, um, we simply wanted you folks to understand that we were making a change with Peach State Reserves, uh, change to a new administrator, and we wanted you to be aware of the, the program change. Thank you. I believe that's all the questions. Thank you very much. You're we welcome. Appreciate I appreciate you it. Thank today. you. Next on the agenda is our state fire marshal and insurance commissioner. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, committee. All right. Yeah. Before you get started, I want to ask you a question. Sure. Speaking of being a fire marshal. I remember, I think, the first year that I served, which may have been the first year that you were the state insurance commissioner, I got a little certificate saying I was a junior fire marshal or an assistant fire on, marshal. honorary <laughs> fire marshal. And I haven't got one since then. I mean, is, don't you have money in your budget for that? No, yeah, yes, we do, but we figured you still had that one, and it's an appointment until revoked, and I haven't revoked it, so it's still in, it's still in effect. Now, if you've mislaid it, I can get you a new one. No, we no. Actually, we keep a record of everyone that's received one, so we normally don't give, re-give them, because that would be meaningless and diminish the value of the one we gave you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'll help you catch up on time. Uh, we really don't have any uh, new budget proposals or anything. Uh, everything we have are just simple uh, routine adjustments. Uh, that are being done in every agency, uh, salary adjustments, rent adjustments, workers' comp premiums, state health benefit premiums, uh, just basic things of that nature. Would mention that, uh, and I'm just kind of giving you a heads up, I don't know where Senate Bill 28 is going to go, that Senator Hill's big health care bill that I'm sure everyone has heard about. And I've talked with Senator Hill about it. If parts of that are passed, uh, they they would put additional burdens on our office, which is fine. But we would probably need some additional people. Really can't say what additional people we would need because we don't know how what parts of that would pass. But it could be it could be as many as half a dozen additional people if everything was passed, if less of it. And that's just sort of a friendly heads up that there could be some financial impacts, but it, it would put, it does put requirements in our office that would require personnel. And I just sort of mentioned that as a, it's not really anything you can do about it at this point. I just want to let you know. Question, any questions? I'll be happy to entertain any questions. Or any questions? We do have a question. Representative Jane. Yes. In my local drugstore a few days ago, and they mentioned something about a fraudulent Medicare or Medicaid card would be in peddled people in my community. Have they contacted you about that, sir? And so forth? Uh, no, I'm not aware of that. And a Medi uh, Medicare fraud, of course, is, is federal law. Medicaid fraud does come under, I guess it would be, the, I think the Attorney General's office and local DA uh, would have jurisdiction over that. To the extent if the Medicaid card was under the new managed Medicaid program uh, and it was designed to defraud the insurance companies that have been hired by Medicaid, that would constitute insurance fraud and that's something that we would have, our police officers would have authority to investigate. I am not aware of any of those specific complaints. I can tell you we do have active investigations on the Medicare side as far as the new form product D, Medicare D, and some of the pharmaceutical provisions uh, because there are some insurance elements to that and they have to be sold by insurance agents. And we do have some insurance agents under investigation for that. On the managed uh, Medicare, to the extent it's managed Medicare, we also would have some jurisdiction. I'm not aware of any open criminal investigations we have in that area. Uh, if, if I would love if you would have your folks get give me that information. Um, I'd have my folks look at it, and if it, if it does come under our jurisdiction, our fraud, criminal fraud division would love to look into that. I've asked them to get me something in writing and 
I just want to, I just want to know if anything has been at, had you on the order. Off the top of my head, I'm not familiar with it and haven't heard about it. And I, they try to keep me abreast of everything. I will also say that, uh, I think most of you know, but you can always call my office. My direct email to my BlackBerry is John Ox, J O H N O X, John Ox at earthlink.net, N E T. I go straight to my wireless. Thank you. Thank you. I have another question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner, thank you for the outstanding job you do for the citizens of Georgia on a daily basis. I'm curious, um, with the insurance um, tax or insurance premium tax collections that you, you perform that function, yes. I think, for, for the state, do you also have an audit function as it relates to that? And, and are you satisfied that you have enough personnel to to, to to carry out an audit function since it probably could be literally over all 50 states, couldn't it? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's pretty much a we – don't, we don't have the resources to really audit the companies. Uh, it is um, self-reporting pretty much as income tax is pretty much self-reporting. Uh, but we really don't – I really don't think we do. I don't think we really have the resources to actually do audits to verify the accurate representations of the premium. Of, of the, two years back, do we actually do field audits or are they simply audits on the self-reported data? Yeah, so we do internal audits on the data that's been self-reported to us as far as going into the field and pulling their records and doing audits. We don't. It's really more of just internal audits and also similar kind of what the state auditor would do when they come to our office, and, and it's sort of an internal thing. Uh, um, no, no fault or culpability suggested on your part at all, but it's been suggested to me and others uh, that there might very well be a lot of that that's intentionally misreported. And, uh, we would love It's in the hundreds of millions of dollars, to, especially local governments as well as state governments. Uh, we could do it. There are two ways it could be done. Uh, one way would be to appropriate money for state employees to go out and do it. There also, what I do do financial audits of insurance companies uh, for solvency purposes, and under that, and also for market conduct purposes. Under the law, for those two purposes, I have the authority to retain outside contractors and bill that service directly to the company. Uh, I don't have that authority for premium tax, but I, actually, I think I would have the authority, but I could only bill them if I caught them doing something wrong, which is sort of a gamble. If they're doing everything right, I can't bill them. I think I could only bill them if they were, if I did find a mistake. That law could be altered, and then I, I could do more audits using outside contractors and have the companies bear that cost, or I could have state employees to do it. It's something we'd like to do would be a prudent thing, but we just don't I, have I would, I would certainly uh, be glad to entertain any suggestions you might have on, on maybe a little bit better oversight on that if, if that uh, uh, situation may exist. It's just what been I suggested. Is, I have no way to corroborate that. Uh, what, Mr. Chairman, why don't I uh, get with some of my folks also and check and see what some of the other states are doing in that area, and we can probably get that done real soon and then circle back around with you yep. and maybe give you a bigger picture. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. I think that's all the questions. I, no, we do have a question. Chairman, uh, Mr. Commissioner, following uh, our Chairman's opening remarks, uh, when I received my certificate, you, <laughs> you sent it to Mayor of Ballground, and I wonder if I should have it retitled to my current position. I think I can get that done for you. Thank you, sir. I will make sure we get that done. Commissioner, we appreciate you coming, appreciate the job that you and your department does. Thank you very much, and remember, anytime you need me, you can call or email my BlackBerry directly. Thank you. Uh, next agency, last agency that we're uh, hearing from today is the uh, state and merit system. And we hope that's not bad news because we're the last ones today. So, As we, as we talked, and I'm... Again, I think we met on the January the 23rd. Pleased to be back in front of you again today. Uh, 
just a reminder, I think on the 23rd, we, uh, I gave you an overview of what the merit system does for the, for the state. Also, the uh, strategic initiatives that we're underway uh, trying to uh, roll out and also talked about agency fun our agency funds and the sources for those funds. And again, um, when we talked on the 23rd regarding the 07 uh, budget, there was not any additional requests for budget, and it's the same for the 08 budget, uh, no additional request. Any questions? I don't see any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. And with that, we are concluding this meeting right on time. And uh, unless there are questions, the meeting is uh, adjourned.